Hello everyone. 
So that was uh, me and Ema um, last week. Um, hang on, I need to mute my YouTube, otherwise it's going to get a bit confusing. Yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, that was me and Ema last week. Um, that was originally like a practice session, but um, I was really ill this week with uh, coronavirus jabs and things. So, um, and, and we listened back to that and thought it was really nice. So we thought we'd share that with you. Um, so that was uh, Ema uh, singing. Um, and um, previous sessions, and what we'd planned is that she'd control more of what I was doing, but um, we didn't have that set up on that particular session. Um, uh, but we actually, it actually was really simple what we did, I think. Um, before I'd added loads of percussion on top, but we just had um, a drum machine that Ema was running, um, and I was just uh, manip manipulating Ema's voice um, with tidal cycles. Um, and it worked uh, really nicely, I thought. <laughs> hey, Ema. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, just introduce Tidal a bit, because there might be people here who haven't seen it before, um, and also show some new features which um, I've been working on um, and released as part of a new version of Tidal called Tidal 1.7 with the code name Eclectic. So these are the eclectic uh, um, features. Um, so let me find my computer. Okay. Um, if you've got any questions, then drop them in the YouTube chat. Or if you're watching on another platform, you can drop them in there. And the good people of Eclectic will transfer them over to the YouTube chat so I can see them. Um. <coughs> right. So... Let me just kind of very briefly introduce Tidal Cycles. If you want to find out more, you can go to tidalcycles.org. <coughs> I should say, by the way, that I was doing some live looping there with an add-on for Tidal Cycles, um, which is called Tidal Looper um, by someone called T.H. Grund, uh, Thomas Grund, I believe, who um, was also known as Mr. Reason. Um, and so if you're already using Tidal and wondering how I did all that looping, then that was all down to Thomas. Um, so yeah, Tidal Cycles, what is it? It's um, a way of making music usually. I mean, people have used it for choreography, controlling lights and other things. Um, but um, it's developed originally for music by me. Um, and now it's a free open source software that anyone can download and use. It's a bit hard to install, but um, there's a whole community of people ready to help you get it installed if you have any problems. Um, so what is Tidal? It's a system just for making algorithmic patterns. Um, so algorithms we kind of associate with um, uh, I don't know, things which are kind of obscured from us. They can kind of control our lives these days. Um, a sort of uh, this benevolent, benevolent presence that's kind of super complicated. Um, Whereas patterns, we think of them as being uh, more kind of human in a way. You get knitting patterns, you get weaving patterns, you get juggling patterns, you get musical patterns. Um, patterns are kind of everywhere, ubiquitous as well. Um, but kind of more they're older, they're kind of ancient, sort of part of human history. Um, but actually, these two things are synonymous. Algorithms are patterns and vice versa. Um, so by putting them together to make algorithmic pattern. I try and get across that um, patterns are something which can be complex, but actually um, we can relate to them. They're, they're, they may be complex, but they're made of simple parts which we can relate to and make and touch. And they're part of our clothes, you know. Um, so what do I mean by a pattern? Um, in music, we talk about patterns. We kind of tend to talk about them in, as sort of simple step sequences or something like if you went up to a respective composer um, and said um, that they were making patterns they'd probably be offended actually the idea that you're just making patterns is something kind of simplistic um, mundane maybe uh, repetitive um, but actually um, patterns are incredible I think uh, so so much depth 
people spend their lives exploring patterns, whether they're mathematicians or braiders or weavers, they all get completely obsessed with them because the more you look into them, the more there is to learn and explore. Um, so, but yeah, the kind of simplest thing that a pattern is, is just like, um, just check. Yeah, let me know if that's too loud or too quiet or you can't hear me or something. Um, so this is just uh, a simplest classic uh, tidal um, pattern. It's just like a BD, which is a kick drum or a bass drum, and an SD, which is a snare drum. So this this is uh, referring to samples I have on my uh, computer. But um, uh, yeah, there's just two things here, but they just play one after another. And the more things I add, the faster it goes. Um, so there you go. The more I add, the more... I mean, this is a bit of a difference from conventional music software, is that um, the cycle is really key. That's what's called tidal cycles. Um, the cycle has a fixed duration um, and everything is sort of fit, squeezed into that cycle. So the more things you add, the faster they go. Um, so let's go back to something a bit simpler. I can also add uh, sort of breakdown steps. Like here, I, I made this so there's two kick drums. Yeah, the repeat time is kept constant to some extent. So now I've got like a four step sequence and this step has got four things in it. It's like broken down into its own cycle. Um, so Robert A says the repeat time is kept stunt constant. That's true, although I can change it. So I can... So th this is called the cycles per second. So I can change the overall rate, um, but then that changes it for the whole system. It's like a global value. Um, um, so those cycles are ticking up all the time. And when I run things, it's just like adding a pattern. Um, and I can add more than one. So I could add a D2 here and put some different kinds of sounds in there. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the sequencing part of Tidal, which is um, influenced by um, Indian classical music um, in, in that the cycle gives the kind of reference point rather than individual notes having um, fixed durations like in uh, Western music. Um, uh, influenced by a system called the Boll Processor by Bernard Bell. Um, and, and there's quite a lot to this sequencing inside the double quotes, um, uh, really a lot. Uh, but basically it comes down to ways of making sequences, whether they're um, uh, kind of quite straight like that, or you can make them so, um, like if I had four things against three, so on um, and I can also make polyrhythms for example so this is where you can have four things against three but on top of each other uh, if that makes sense so uh, let's have some more of those RP sounds Um, you could kind of hear that there's two rhythms running at different rates that kind of fall over each other. Um, 
So I don't want to get too much into the details. I'm not going to cover the whole of Tidal in, in this short uh, session. But I just want to give you an impression of what's possible just within this quite simple syntax for um, uh, what I'd call sort of polyrhythmic um, sequences. Um, so it's all about layering things up, uh, breaking things down, um, having weird compound time signatures and things like that. Um, but then outside the double quotes, um, there's functions. Um, so you start off with sequences and then you have functions. So things like chopping up sounds. So now each sound is chopped into eight bits. Um, and then I can reverse those eight bits. Um, or I could reverse them, but only in one ear or one speaker. Or I could chunk that sequence into four bits and then um, each of those chunks I'll hurry up by a, a factor of two. Um, maybe you'll just hear what it sounds like rather than me trying to explain it. sounds quite nice um, but the thing is after a while you you sort of like here I've I've got like quite a simple sequence here I've just got this which is like a rest it just pushes this snare drum um, um, in into the site into this sub cycle a bit um, but otherwise it's a pretty straight bass drum snare drum mid tom low tom sound um, and I'm chopping them into bits and then chunking them and hurrying up those chunks and then reversing, but only in one ear. Um, but it's not like you hear any one of these things at the same time. You hear like a whole kind of pattern. Um, so it's like um, you have all these simple things happening, but what actually comes out is really complex. All these different layers interacting with each other. And so you get a, this weird interference pattern ha happening, which is um, really hard to predict, like even though I made Tidal, I've been using it for a long time. Um, it still surprises me every time I use it. Like I couldn't read this um, and have a clear idea what what um, is going to happen. I can understand everything in it, but I can't anticipate the actual musical results exactly. But I can still understand it enough to be able to change it because um, all it really is is stringing together some transformations and I can add more modify them or take one away. Um. Um, yeah, Robert asked, um, is that different from having a D1 and a D2 running? Um, I think um, they were probably referring to when I had like things layering up in here. Um, Um, and yeah, the the answer is is, is pretty similar. Um, so you can have separate patterns running, but if they're running separately, then you can't have one function that modifies both of them at the same time. Except actually, you can. But it's it's a uh, yeah different procedure. Yeah, I guess sometimes it's nice to just have things running separately, and sometimes it's nice to have them running together conceptually. Um, but yeah. So um, that's like a really fast introduction to what Tidal is for me. Um, different people have different approaches to it. Um, I I'm, I'm really like to improvise with it. I like uh, uh, running things from, uh, just building up things from scratch while I'm performing. Um, other people really like developing tracks with it. And then if they're performing, they, they're just manipulating patterns they've already made. Um, to make something a bit more polished and less haphazard than the kind of thing I do. Um, uh, so it's really interesting as, as more and more people have got involved, um, uh, how it's been 
taken in different directions. Um, so, um, so uh, me and Ema have been uh, developing um, a collaboration. Uh, we haven't got a name for it yet. Any um, suggestions? Uh, much appreciated. Uh, it's always hard to come up with a name. Um, during this residency with the Eclectic offsite. Um, thanks so much for Eclectic for supporting this. Um, we've actually collaborated before, but organizing events, um, like a lot of musicians, we're also super um, uh, motivated to make new events, new spaces to do things. But um, it's, it's been really good during this uh, strange time to have a bit of time just to collaborate as musicians. Um, uh, yeah, Emas in various bands like uh, Ganglions, I think, and uh, uh, and I I do things with uh, various other collaborators, but um, ne never really um, managed to get collaborating with a vocalist before. So um, that's, that's been really amazing because I think there's something really nice about collaborating between um, uh, the voice and code because uh, they're both kind of languages in weird ways, but um, very different uh, approaches to language. But I think it's nice to s think about how they could come close together. And I think actually Ema has um, sort of got interest in computer music, maybe partly through being in, um, uh, exposed to more computers through this uh, <laughs> collaboration. But um, yeah, it'd be, maybe I'll start singing as well. We'll see. Um, anyway, so I'm 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 uh, I'm going a bit um, off piece there. So yeah, so there's this new version of Tidal 1.7. Actually, um, it's up to 1.73 because there were bugs and things. But there's basically three things that I wanted to quickly show you that are new through this residency. Um, and th and that comes down to three things really. Um, so Tidal now has improved handling for syncopation for counting and for change. So they seem like quite fundamental things um, to develop. So let, let's uh, go through seeing what I mean. So I'll just um, come up with a fairly Yeah, thanks to CPU records for um, given me these samples, um, uh, they sound wha great wherever you do, so that's always good. Um, so, yeah, um, syncopation. Um, actually, I'll start with something a little bit simpler. Oh, shall I? Uh, maybe not too simple. So syncopation is just where you um, have more events on the sort of off beats or the weak beats. Um, so uh, if I had like a, a kick drum going just for reference. Oh, thanks Mr. Reason for popping in. Um, so one thing I could do to make it sy more syncopated is do this sort of thing where I'm pushing an event into the second half of its kind of step. Um, don't know if you can hear that too clearly. Um, but what I've done instead is made a function that does that for you. So it's called press. And so I can just do press now and it will syncopate this thingy. So let's start with it straight again. Speed up the sounds a bit. Increase the CBS a bit. Okay. Can you hear that difference? I'll try again with the kick. You can kind of feel that's 
funkier already, really. And then I can use that with other functions, so. So that's just every second repetition is pressing it in, so it's kind of syncopating. Um, so that's one example. I could also do jacks for the press. Um, there you go. I mean, um, I could probably come up with something a bit more musical than that, but uh, that gives you the idea anyway. Um, so the second thing um, is um, counting. So because um, of the way Tidal works inside, it's just like a function of time. Um, and until I added this feature, it couldn't really deal with um, what computer programmers call state very well, where um, one sound um, is dependent on the previous sound in some way. Um, so, for example, if I had uh, some drum sounds. Um, yeah, let's say. Um, something like that. Um, if I wanted to um, have um, move between four different versions of the drum sound, um, so there's four. It's asking for four different variations of the drum. Um, but it's there's only three that are playing uh, using this. Um, way of specifying rhythm called a Euclidean rhythm. So it's playing three steps over, three sounds over eight steps, basically. Um, and because it's asking for three here, um, one of these is getting ignored, um, uh, which is a bit annoying. <laughs> uh, so um, I've just added something called counts, and I can do n count. Uh, I have to give it a name, uh, I think then it should work. Um, no, I've made a mistake. Yeah, I've made a mistake there. Yeah, so I'll just give it... Um, String, yeah, okay. But then it's counting through all the drums, so I think I need to do n count two to say that I want the first four. Yeah. I'm not convinced that's the best example of that those drum sound. Let's try this. That sounds better. So if I just had three here, then they'd line up perfectly with the amount of sounds there are per cycle. You can hear the rhythm very clearly. If I change it to four, Again, you have a um, interference pattern. I think this is called an ISO rhythm. So you have like a rhythm of three, which is just, which I think is the Trasillo pattern um, with three sounds in it, but I'm spreading, having four going over it. So it's kind of cycling through those four um, and it um, takes three cycles, I think, before um, it matches up again. Um, how does he change the levels of each new instrument? We've got a qu question from Texaco Music there. Um, well, um, you just have to, yeah, <laughs> good question. I mean, 
it's just playing back samples, so it's just using the, the sound level of the sample, but you can add an extra thing to vary that. So if I wanted to, um, like, slow. So now I've got like a sawtooth wave smoothly increasing the gain. Um, so basically everything's a pattern. There's all different kinds of things you can pattern. Like I could pattern um, uh, a vowel filter. So. So now you can hear there's like a vowel quality of the sound that's being patterned. Or I could pattern the amount of reverb. So yeah, gain, you can use gain to change the levels of the sounds. Um, okay, so yeah, so that, that's what I call counting, is just being able to have, um, being able to count up independently of um, the rhythm itself. So each time there's a sound, it just counts up and gives you a new number, which in this case translates to a different drum. Um, so yeah, now Tidal can count, it's pretty good. <laughs> um, and the last one uh, I flagged up was Change. So this is, um, a lot of um, mus music software is really focused on trigger messages, like um, uh, when you hit, hit this, a sound, hit a key on a keyboard, um, you don't have any control over the quality of that sound. Uh, you might have something like a modulation wheel or something, but um, in a lot of computer music, you haven't even got that. You, so everything you decide, uh, you have to decide everything about the sound at the moment that you trigger it, and then it uh, carries on with that instruction, um, which was the case with Tidal until this new release, Eclectic. So um, now if you've got quite a, a sound which isn't actually very exciting, if it's static like this, quite harpy um uh so yeah i mean it's it's not a bad saxophone sound but um it'd be nice if we could vary it with a pattern as it played um and that wasn't possible until now so let's try um i'll add um legato just so it doesn't overlap <laughs> Maybe slow it down a bit. Okay. So let's say I wanted to have um, a filter, high pass filter. Um, let's start with that. Um, and then wanted to change that while it was playing. Um, and it's just chain keeping with that original value. Um, uh, but what you can do now is um, uh, use something called a BESS, um, which you'll be familiar with if you're a sound engineer, just a way of sort of routing sounds or numbers around. Um, so I have to give this BESS a name, so I'll just call it I again. I think that's right. Oh no, it needs to be a number, I think. Is that right? Yeah, it's been a number, so let's call it one. Cool, so now I can change the, that sax while it's playing. I'll use a sine wave, sample that 16 times. 
and have it going from one uh, maybe lower 500 to 1000 or th And then I can start patterning that um, as well. So. Just trying it with a low pass filter instead. to stop yourself from mouthing the um, filter as it opens and closes. It's a very visceral feeling. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. It's, uh, it means that we can start making drone music in Tidal finally, which is quite exciting. <laughs> be a lot of other um, sort of uh, uses for that apart from drone music if you want to make progressive trance or something or invent a whole new genre I mean that's a good thing about working with patterns is that you once you've kind of um, written out your pattern you can change it and make a whole new style um, so yeah I invite you to make the next um, the next uh, genre that's gonna take over the world with that um, and the other features. So that's about it for um, this. If you've got any more questions, um, uh, shout out. Um, otherwise, uh, that will probably be it for now. Um, this has been really fun. Thanks again to Eclectic. Um, I'm looking forward to hopefully doing some real life events soon. Maybe we'll come down to London and play. It'd be very nice. Uh, I feel quite out of practice at this point. I hope you're all well and that uh, your families and friends are doing all right. Um, and uh, look forward to um, seeing uh, you in the flesh at <laughs> some point. It's good to see lots of friends in the chat. Um, old friends and also new friends that I've um, met online. Um, over the last uh, year or so, um, but yeah, okay. I think I've talked through the YouTube latency at this point, so I think that we aren't going to have any more questions. Uh, so, um, but if you do have questions, then you're very welcome to join us in the Title Club community. Um, there's club.titlecycles.org. Um, on there also is um, uh, online title course. Um, I did lots of videos. Um, the first half of that, uh, quite a few weeks worth, is now free open source, so you can um, <laughs> so you can uh, watch those as well if you uh, want to learn um, the inner title. Ah, there's one more. Ah, speed at 1 and speed at 1.25 makes a major third on the sample. 
Um, yeah, so this is just changing the playback rate of the sample. So if it seems like the person asking that knows more about music theory than me, so um, I would say yes, you're probably right if you're asking that question, but I don't know. Um, there are ways um, of uh, working in notes instead, like if you had, let's see if I've got that sample loaded. Yeah, I do. That's quite low. If you're just listening on laptop speakers, you might not hear that too well. I'll, let's say I'll play a synth. So this is actually a synthesizer running on Super Collider. Um, and I can play notes on that. Uh, and then you can go up and down as well. Do things like chords if you want. And do cannons. So yeah, you can work with notes as well. Um, you can do it with samples too. Um, but yeah, I was just messing directly with this playback speed to um, create something that was a bit more like a chord. Um, good, okay, well, I think we'll leave it at that, if that's all right. Um, uh, as I was saying, uh, feel free to join us on in the Tidal Cycles Club. There's also a Discord, which you can find on tidalcycles.org you prefer to chat live um, and wish you all well and um, yeah have fun <laughs> uh, yeah thanks everyone bye